So I've got some notes up on my website, dave.if90.net, as usual, under KRB216, Tutorials, and Week 5. Okay, the first post uh, is a screencast from uh, the lecture that I gave last Friday, um, which is all about WordPress. Okay, so if for whatever reason you missed that, um, it's worth a review um, because it's all very relevant to uh, what we're going to go through in today's tutorial and also the coming weeks. Uh, I want to look at two different things today. First of all, I'm going to demonstrate in the process of installing WordPress on a remote web server. And then after that, we're going to start looking at actually creating a WordPress theme. So I've got some notes here about um, the process of installing WordPress on the QUT web server. Um, I'm, I won't demonstrate that because, as I said before, we don't recommend using that for your assignment. Uh, but the notes are there nonetheless if you ever need to do that. Um, okay, so then the next post is about installing WordPress on a remote web server. I've pulled out the relevant parts of my lecture slide and posted them here so that you can follow along those steps if you like. Uh, and then there's also a um, YouTube video by someone else who, who went through the same process. But I'm going to demonstrate that process anyway. Um, by, by all means, feel free to do this if, if you want, but I have to move pretty quick, so I, I probably won't be able to stop and help people out individually. Um, but I did finish a little bit early in my last class, so if we do that again, I'll, I'll hang around, and if you wanna, want help, installing WordPress or doing whatever else, we can do that then. Okay, but otherwise I'm just going to demonstrate it, um, the steps. And as usual, I'll put the screencast up so you can always come back to this and follow along later. <clears throat> okay, so there are four main steps uh, it, that involved with installing WordPress. Okay, the first one is uh, actually downloading the WordPress files and we obtain them from the wordpress.org website, okay, not wordpress.com. Um, okay, and the download links are pretty obvious, and just hit the download link there, and I'll let that download. Okay, that will download as, a, uh, as an archive, so we want to extract that. Okay, and it will extract to a folder called WordPress. So inside of that is all of WordPress's core files, which we need to have on our web server in order for WordPress to run. So the next step is uh, uploading these files to our web server. Okay, so we need some way to do that, and so you're going to need a, an FTP client. So I've got FileZilla running here. Okay, and I've plugged in the, the details. I've set up, I should mention, I've set up a, a, a new empty website um, at this address, krb216.if90.net. Okay, I've set it up, it's blank, it's got nothing in it. Okay, so it would look like a website that you've just set up and paid for but have not put anything there yet. Okay, so at the moment if I go to this URL, okay, there's nothing there. It gives me an index and there's, there's no files there. If I log in with my FTP details to my web server, connect here, okay, you can see there's the public HTML folder here, okay, which represents the web root, the directory that when I put in the URL it's going to point to. Okay, and it's empty there, no files. So I want to um, transfer the WordPress files uh, to, to um, that remote directory there, that public underscore HTML um, directory. Now, you might be tempted to just transfer the um, entire folder, the entire WordPress folder like this. Okay, but as I mentioned, I'd recommend against that because if you, if you do that and you have a WordPress folder inside of there, in order for people to actually access your WordPress site, they'll need to type in your domain and then forward slash WordPress to actually access that. Okay, so that's an extra unnecessary step that we don't want the users to have to go through. So I would suggest just make sure that don't upload the WordPress folder itself, but upload all of the contents. Okay, all of the contents to the remote website. Okay, so that those WordPress files are sitting in your root directory, probably a public underscore HTML directory like that. Okay, so I'll leave that to upload. I've also, in my code editor here, got a, um, 
got a um, a new project set up. Okay, so I can I'm going to I've got a section on my hard drive where I'm going to store these files, so I'm also going to copy them over to there. Okay, so they're on my local hard drive there. And then in my code editor as well, okay, I've got um, I've got this set up to automatically connect to my uh, site's FTP account as well. Okay, just so I don't have to go every time I save a file, go and upload it in the FileZilla. Um, so I've got it set so that any changes I make to my local files will be automatically uploaded here. And when FileZilla has finished this copying here, which it has, I should be able to refresh this and see all of those files there. Okay, so now I've got um, my WordPress files on my remote web server and also I've got a copy of the identical files on my local local hard drive which, which I'll work off and edit those files and every time I save them they'll automatically be uploaded to my remote web server. Okay, so that's step two, putting uh, WordPress files on to um, our web server, well step one, sorry. Step two is to create the actual database, okay? So WordPress requires that we create a database for it so it can store all of its posts and page content and comments and whatever other information it needs to store. Okay, so the way that I'm going to do that is my web hosting has an interface called cPanel. Okay, and if you have Unix web hosting, there's a good chance that you will also have um, cPanel, and you can usually access that at your domain name and then forward slash cPanel. Um, if it's something different to that, that information should be sent to you in your setup email, okay, along with your FTP login details. Um, otherwise, it's something that you should be able to uh, email your hosting provider about and ask them, how do I access my uh, website's control panel? Okay, so this is the address for my site's control panel. Uh, it requires a username and a password to log in. There. Okay, I'll hit log in. All right, and this is what the cPanel interface looks like. So this is just a um, this is just a web page which has a bunch of um, links to various different tools which allow us to do different things in administering our website. Um, they usually have a lot of really useful um, help um, files and, and tutorials and videos and things. Okay, and there's a whole lot of stuff in here. A lot of this stuff you probably never even need to touch. Over on the left here, it gives you some useful information about your website. Okay, so things like how much disk space you've used and your monthly bandwidth transfer, all sorts of things like that. Um, Okay, and um, there's, for example, a, a file manager. Okay, so if you want, you can transfer files to your website through this interface instead of using FTP. It's just another way of doing it. There's a section where you can configure your FTP accounts there. Okay, so there's the FTP account that I use. You can always come in here and change the password if you forget it. Um, there's areas where you can configure uh, subdomains, things like that. Okay, but the <coughs> the section I'm interested in for this uh, purpose is the databases section. Okay, so there's a few different uh, things to do with databases here. There's the PHP My Admin interface, okay, which looks like this, which is sort of a low-level way of doing things with interfaces. You can actually go in and edit the database tables individually with this interface. And then there's some sort of higher level interfaces. There's a, a wizard, which is a step-by-step -step way of setting up um, a database. Or there's this interface here, which just says MySQL databases, which is like the wizard, but lets you do it all in the, in the same page. So which one of those you use doesn't really matter. I'll demonstrate using this one here, which is just the MySQL databases link. So I'm going to click on that. And it comes up with a page that looks like this. Okay, now there's, there's two parts to setting up the database. I need to create the actual database itself, and then I need to create a user uh, that has access to that database. Okay, so there's a, few different, there's a few different areas when setting up this website where we're gonna create login credentials for different purposes. 
In this case, we're going to create a login for access to the database. Okay, and in each case, it's so that no one can just come and access your database content. Okay, but the first step is to create the database itself. So here there's a section that says create new database. And you'll notice that it will probably um, prepend your database name with the username that you've logged into your cPanel with. Okay, so that's the this is the, the username that's been assigned to me for this particular domain, KIV216, and that's a lowercase L. So then I need to come up with a name for this database. Um, now my suggestion is that you name the database something relevant to the nature of the site. So rather than calling it something like WordPress, okay, which you may end up having multiple WordPress sites. So if you just have all of your databases named some variation of WordPress, it might get confusing which one belongs to which site. So if this is for your portfolio, I'd recommend calling it your database something like portfolio. Okay, but that then is the full name of the database. The, KV216L underscore, or my username underscore, and then the name that I've assigned there. So I'll hit create database. Okay, it tells me that it's added the database, KV216L underscore portfolio. Then I'll hit go back. Now I can see in this table down here um, under current databases, okay, that database that I've just created uh, is listed there. Okay, and it tells you how big it is. It's zero megabytes at the moment because it doesn't contain any information. And then I've got the option to delete databases here. Okay, so the next step is to create our MySQL user. Okay, so um, in this case there's two parts. I need to create a username and I need to create a password. Okay, and this is information that we need to give WordPress's configuration file so that it can access our database. So um, you can enter in whatever you want as a um, username here really. I'm going to call mine admin. Okay, so then my username is my cPanel username underscore and then admin. And then a password here I can either type in my own or I can use this secure password generator, okay, which will generate a nice secure password for me. Um, so I'll make sure that I copy that. Okay, so I have access to it, and then I'll say use password, it'll fill those two in there, and then we create the user. Now if you ever forget the password for your MySQL user, um, it's not a huge deal because you can always come back and delete that user and create a new one and assign them to the same database. Um, okay, but obviously it's useful if you don't forget it. Okay, so I need to remember this information to give to WordPress, so I've, I've copied that password and I'll remember this username and I'll go back. Okay, and there's one final step to, uh, to this database part. So you can see in the current users now, there's the user that I just created. And now I actually have to assign this database user access privileges to the database that I've created. Okay, so I might have multiple users here and multiple databases down here, so it, at, at, at this point I only have one of each, but this would allow me to select a user and then select the database that I want to assign that user to. Okay, so I select both of those that I've just created, click Add, and then it comes up with a screen that asks me what, um, what MySQL privileges do I want to allow this user to perform on this database. Now in the case of WordPress, WordPress needs to do all of these things. So I'm just going to tick all privileges and that will tick all of these checkboxes. And then I'm going to hit make changes. Okay, and it tells me that the user that I've created was added to the database that I created. Okay, and it will have those privileges that I just selected. Okay. All right, so that's our database set up. Um, I can move back out of there now. And let's just go back to my <coughs> cPanel. Okay, um, and now that I've done that, just for curiosity's sake, I can go into this PHP My Admin section and I can see that there's the database that I've created set up here. OK, 
Okay, so every database I create will be listed in here in the PHP My Admin. And now that that exists there, I can come in and I can, if I wanted to, I can create tables and enter information into the database. Now I don't need to do any of this because WordPress takes care of all of that for us. Okay, but it's just interesting to come and check back this interface to see what's actually being put in there by WordPress after we go through the installation process. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to go back to just my plain website, okay, which now has the WordPress installation files on my web server. So rather than seeing that blank index, we see a page that looks like this. Okay, so it's telling me that we need to uh, set up a configuration file for WordPress so that it knows how to access our database that we've set up. Okay, so I'll click on create a configuration file here. And it tells me that it needs to know a few things. It lets go. Okay, and these are the things that it needs to know. So there's the database name. And the database name that I created was called KIB216L underscore portfolio. The username was KIB216 underscore admin. Okay, remembering this is the, the SQL user. Um, the S MySQL password, which I copied just before. Okay, and then the database host here, nine times out of ten, um, it'll be fine to just leave that as localhost. All that means is that the SQL server will be running on the same IP address as, the, as your web server. Um, and that'll almost always be the case with um, any hosting that you get. If it's different, you will be given that information again in your setup email. It'll say, it'll, it'll say database host is this and then it will look like a URL or an IP address. Okay, but most of the time it's going to be fine just to leave that as local host. And then finally uh, there's a section here that says table prefix. So it is possible to have run multiple WordPress installations out of the one database in which case each, uh, each installation needs to have a different prefix to assign to the, the tables in the database. Now, generally I'd, re I'd say that that's a bad idea. You'd only do that if you had limited numbers of databases that you could install on your hosting and you really needed to have multiple sites. But there's probably a limitation that you're never going to run into. So I would suggest if you do have multiple WordPress installations, have a separate database for each one. Um, and so in this case, it's fine just to leave that as its default or have it as whatever you want. It doesn't, doesn't make a difference. Okay, so I've got all that information in there, making sure that's correct. I'll hit submit. Okay, and it tells me all good and that I can now go ahead and run the install. Okay, I've done that. Now, I should mention at this point, sometimes that automated process of installing won't work. You might get a, a screen that says that it couldn't automatically create the configuration file. Um, and that can happen sometimes and it gives you instructions to create that file manually. So it has worked for me and I can tell that because if I refresh this, okay, I can see now on my remote host I've got a wp-config.php file. Okay, that doesn't exist on my local version. Okay, I've only got the sample version of that file. So if, if the automated configuration um, fails to work in WordPress, it won't create that file for you. For whatever reason, it won't have the, PHP won't have the correct permissions to create that file. But that's okay. All you really need to do is, um, you can achieve the same process by um, getting this WP config sample file and copying it and changing the name to just wp-config.php so lose the hyphen sample part at the end and then all this is is a PHP file that sets up a bunch of parameters for WordPress okay and these top few are the ones that we entered the information for just before okay so there's the database name so I could put that in manually here there's the database user and the database password, okay, and then the database host, which I leave um, as it was there as well. 
Okay, and that's exactly what that automated process would have done. It would have put those bits of information in there and then saved that wp-config um, file to the server. Okay, so we can just do that manually and then you would obviously upload that to remote web website. Okay, so at this point, um, and then you would come back and refresh the page and if the config file was recognized and everything's okay, it can connect to the database, then it will come up with this page here. Um, okay, so it just wants us to add a few more things. So it wants to give us, it wants us to give our site a title. So I'll just call it Dave's site, and then um, and you can always go back in WordPress's admin interfaces and change this information later. Then it wants you to set up a um, a first user account um, so that you can actually access WordPress's admin interfaces. Okay, so this is a different login again. This is the one that you will actually use to log into WordPress, WordPress's back end. So the default, uh, the default username we usually give you here is admin. I generally recommend using your name because if you're logged in as this user and you create a post or a page and you output the author of that, that page, then, then it will output as whatever you, the username is there. Okay, so if you want it to output as admin, then that's fine, but I prefer if I write a post that the author says my name, so I create the, the default account as, as my name. And then you want to create a password. Okay, so we put that in twice. And then you can put your email address in here as well because WordPress can email you when certain things happen, if there's a problem with your site or someone's um, someone's added a new comment to one of your posts, for example. Okay, so I'll put my email address in there. And then there's a checkbox here where you can either allow or disallow search engines to index your site. Now for a portfolio site, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want it to appear in search engines, so I would recommend leaving that checked. And then we hit install WordPress. Ooh, okay, um, so I've got an error here, so I'm just going to go back and double check all of my um, database information. There's a chance that this may not have worked properly. Uh, okay, so when I when I created the config file manually myself, okay, I didn't enter this in properly, and it was automatically uploaded to my to my remote host. So I just think that's the only problem there is I'm missing that. So make sure that's uploaded. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's the kind of error you'll get if it can't access your database. Is that error establishing database connection? So now that I've corrected that information, I've, I've tried it again, it's worked. Okay, it said WordPress has been installed, and then it's telling me, it's just reminding me that, that the, the login that I need to actually access WordPress, okay, is that one that I just created there, username there, and then the password that I created. So I'll click on login, it will take me to a login page, and I'll enter in the WordPress login that I created. Okay, and I can tell it to remember me so I don't have to keep coming back and logging in. Okay, and if I log in successfully, it takes me to the WordPress <laughs> admin interface. Okay, now I'm just going to check back once more to the PHP My Admin page because I just want to show you now that that install has run. If I refresh this page, okay, now there's a whole bunch of tables in the database there. Okay, so that's what the WordPress install has set up for us. So that's great. We don't have to. We didn't have to write a single line of database code. Okay, and it's got a whole bunch of tables, and you can sort of guess from their names what kind of content they store. So there's this WP users um, table here. Okay, which contains that user that I created, and if I create any more users, they'll exist in here as well. It's got a um, table for the posts. Okay, so I can see there's a few default bits of default content in here and these and that will be added to again as I make more posts in WordPress. 
Okay, and then various other other um, tables for storing things like comments and options and settings and that sort of thing. Okay, but you probably never need to come in um, and, and mess around with this, so that's just sort of a um, an interesting thing um, to know to, to understand that WordPress is sort of doing all this in the background for you. So I'll close that down now. I don't need to worry about that. I don't need my C panel anymore. Now I can pretty much just work with um, my code editor, my FTP client, and um, the the website itself. Okay. So this is WordPress installed now, and this is one part of the interfaces. This is the the admin or the back end interfaces, and you can see from the URL here that the address to that is always the uh, the URL of your website and then forward slash wp hyphen admin. Okay, so if I ever want to get back to that again, I can just type in that address. To access the front end, I simply just type in the URL of my website. Okay, and so this is the um, this is the default front end. It's got a default theme installed and it's got some default content just so that there's something there. Okay, so there's a post there. You can click on it, links to the full post, and then there's a um, okay, there's a link to a, a sample page over here. Okay. So I'm just going to go back to my um, admin section now. And we'll just have a look around at um, a few of the sections here. So the default screen here is a dashboard, which gives you a, an overview of what's going on with your website. Okay, then you've got a section where you can do various updates. Um, it's a good idea to keep your WordPress installation and your plugins up to date, okay, because that avoids security risks. So it's a good idea to update those um, quite often. There's a section where I can um, administer posts, so I can see existing posts here. Okay, and I can add new ones, so I could add a second post here. Okay, and you can publish that post, and then that post will appear. And you can see as I've done that, going back to the front end page, okay, that the home page is listing all of those posts in reverse chronological order for me. Um, okay, here's where I can also edit categories and tags if I want. Uh, there's a section for media, there's um, a section where I can add pages, okay, so remembering the subtle difference between posts and pages. A page is a standalone thing by itself. Okay, whereas posts can be listed all together on the one view or the one page. Um, there's things you can do with comments. Um, there's plugins. Okay, so you can see there's a couple of default plugins there. Um, when you install a plugin, um, you need to activate it. So these plugins are not actually activated. If we wanted them to actually be functional, we'd have to click that activate button. Um, and here's where you can also add new plugins. Okay, so you can search for plugins and install those. Uh, you can administer users. Okay, so there's the one user that I've set up there. I can create more users there with various different privileges. Um, there's a setting for tools and settings. Okay, so here, for example, in the general settings is where I uh, set my site title um, and various other information. And all these subheadings here are, are just other settings, and uh, you can look at those as, as you as you as they sort of become relevant to you. 